This is a 2021 Giant Revolt Advance Zero. It's a really good, highly capable, fun, fast, and good value for money carbon fiber gravel bike. And in this video, I'll go through everything you need to know about this bike and give my verdict at the end of the video. To look at this bike, it's not as visually exciting as something like the Aero 3T Explorer Race Max, or has the suspension and down tube compartment tech from the Specialized Diverge, but it gets everything right that a gravel bike needs in 2021. So for bike packing with accessory mounts, mud guards for winter road riding, to gravel racing, to messing around in the woods, it's a bike that does everything really well and it's everything you'd expect from a gravel bike. So the Revolt is a wide range of bikes. They all share the same fundamental design and stretch all the way from about 1,000 pounds for an aluminium framed option, all the way up to about 5,000 for all the latest technology. This model here sits somewhere in the middle of the range and costs, at the time of making the video, three and a half thousand pounds. And you get a lot of spec for your money. So a full carbon fiber frame and fork, carbon fiber wheels, a Shimano GRX 2x hydraulic disc brake group set, and some nice contact point details. But before we go into the frame and the components a bit more in detail, let's talk about how it rides, because that's what's really important. So I've been riding for the last few weeks in a wide range of trail conditions from mud, rain, snow, and ice. And let me share my thoughts with you now. The Revolt could not have arrived at a better time. With some truly horrible weather, going out on a road bike just isn't that appealing. But a blast around the local woods and byways on the Revolt is enough to put a smile on your mud splattered face. The unassuming appearance gives way to an impressively quick bike over a wide range of surfaces. It's no slouch on a road compared to an endurance road bike at modest speeds, which is handy when linking together off-road trails. Get mud and gravel underneath the tyres and a Revolt has the capacity to let you fully exploit the speed through the trees, with a confidence in its handling that inspires you to push a little faster into each successive corner. It might not be as outright fast as a 3T Exploro or Cervelo Espero Aero gravel bikes, or have the bump crushing ability of the Specialized Diverge or Cannondale Topstone, but it's definitely not slow and it's definitely not a jarring ride. And it is definitely lots of fun. The geometry, short stem and swept back handlebar gives really good control on twisting trails. Through my favorite single track, it carves turns with the ability of a mountain bike. It's hugely entertaining on such trails, providing you swap out the tires for more aggressive treads of course, with tremendous chuckability that lets you easily nip and tuck between the trees. The stock slicks are fine on the road and dry hard packed gravel. It feels really at home on the road, very quick and it holds its pace really nicely. At modest speeds, there's really little to separate it and a road focused endurance bike, yet the smoothness on offer from the wide tyres helps to smother the coarsest road surfaces. On climbs, the low weight and stiff frame feel responsive to your pedaling input while the hydraulic disc brakes keep you out of trouble when coming back down the other side. For combining road and off-road, in whatever ratio takes your fancy, the Revolt excels everywhere. It's this easy handling, great components and low weight that make it a thoroughly enjoyable bike over a wide range of surfaces and terrains. If you want a bike that's at home on the road, but can easily be turned to off-road exploring, bike packing and adventuring, the Revolt is an easy bike to recommend. It's just really good fun, extremely capable in all situations and about as accessible as it gets. So it's a really fast bike on the road, really nimble and agile and fun in the woods. And the comfort is really good and actually surprised me because when you look at it, there are no additional features like suspension to offer more smoothness over rough ground. But there are a few key details that help to deliver a smooth ride. Now, the first one is of course, the big tires. The Revolt will take up to a 45 mm wide tyre on a 700 c rim, or go down to the 650B wheel and you get up to a 50 mm wide tyre. These, by the way, are a 40 mm wide tyre and plenty of clearance around the fork and the rear stays, so you can easily go wider and space the mud guards as well. 
So the tyres go a long way to providing that smooth ride the bike offers, but that's not all. There's also the carbon fibre frame and fork, all tuned by carbon fibre layup and the profiles of the tubes and the way the rear stays are lower, got a very low slung top tube, all to provide a more compliance, let the frame flex in a very controlled way. And then we have two features borrowed from their endurance defy road bike. The first one is the D-shaped seat post, which was first launched on that Defy back in 2015. And if I remember correctly, because I went to that launch in Scotland, they claimed about 12 millimeters of rearward flex in that seat post. And of course that depends on rider weight, uh, how much seat post you have extended from the frame, but quite a lot of flex. And you can actually see it and feel it when you're riding along. Not in a bad way, but in a nice way, flexing uh, when you're riding over rough ground, whether it's cobbles or roots and rocks. The amount of seat post extension helps as well, of course. Very low slung top tube, the compact frame design that Giant are renowned for. We've got the seat clamp inside the frame as well to increase the amount of seat post extended. And that D-shape really helps to provide more flex over a traditional round seat post. And then that D-shape profile concept is taken onto the handlebar, which also has a D-shape along the top. Now it's an aluminium handlebar, not carbon fiber like the top end bikes but it still makes a difference. It does provide a slightly smoother ride than a traditional round handlebar. Not a huge amount, but a tiny percentage point here or there. It's also a really nice handlebar as well. It's swept back from the stem as well to give you a shorter reach to the drops and the hoods, and that's nice. And the tops are very slim, so you can easily fit your hands around them, especially this time of year when you're wearing big, chunky gloves. So nice handlebar, nice seat pose, big tires, and the frame design all helps to give a very smooth ride despite the lack of suspension and other features you get on some other manufacturer bikes. Being a gravel bike, it needs to be versatile and versatile it certainly is. For a start, we have mud guard mounts front and rear. So it's perfect for winter riding, especially with a slick tire like these. Then on a the fork, you spot a bolt about halfway up and that's for an accessory mount for a rack or such like, so that's a nice detail. And then underneath the down tube, we both have an extra bottle cage mount, giving you three bottle cages in total, and some armor cladding to protect the carbon frame from rock strikes from the front wheel. We don't have a pair of bolts on the top tube, which are quite common with gravel bikes, but personally, I'm down with that. I don't really like having two bolts on the top tube because most bags, when I put on the top tube, I strap using Velcro, so not having two bolts to ruin the clean lines uh, works fine for me. Let's go through the frame details a bit more. And for a start, I think it's a really good looking bike. Now it's understated, yes, but I sort of like that in a gravel bike because most of the time, let's be honest, it'd be covered in mud. Uh, so it works for me. We've got a nice seat clamp covered, keep the mud out of the bolt there. Nice sloping top tube, quite a muscular angular head tube, internal cable routing for the cables and brake hoses and inside the fork as well. Nice drop rear stays got a slight curve or cutaway to the seat tube to enhance the amount of flex from the seat tube and seat post. It's disc brakes only, of course, with 12 mm through axles and flat mount calipers. We've got a PF86 press fit bottom bracket, but as with all giant bikes I've ridden in the past, no issues with creaking or squeaking from that setup, so that's all fine. So a good looking bike, not the flashiest or uh, most eye-catching bike in the world, but subdued and understated and with the black rims and all the black parts, it looks pretty stealthy to me. So but let me know what you think down below. So the frame, let's spin it around and talk about components. For three and a half thousand pounds, you get a lot of equipment for your money and a lot of carbon fiber. So carbon frame, carbon fork, and carbon wheels. These being the company's own CXR2 carbon fiber wheels with a 35 millimeter depth and a 25 millimeter internal rim width. So that is ideal for the wide tires, which we do have here, creating a nice smooth uh, profile and a good foundation for wide tires at low pressures, stopping the tires squirming around in the corners. The weight of the wheels is very impressive, coming in at about 1500 grams, so pretty lightweight, it has to be said, and helps to contribute to a low overall weight of the bike and definitely gives the bike a real sense of speed and urgency and a real snappy responsiveness to the way the bike handles. So a nice set of carbon fiber wheels. And then 
we have Shimano GRX Mechanical 2x Group Set. Now you know I do prefer 1x if you saw my video on that the other day, linked above if you missed it. But 2x works well, especially in more of a road focus uh, setup, which this one is with these slick tyres. As with all Shimano Group Sets, it works really well. Shifting's accurate, fast, quiet, even the front mech works extremely well. You can change under load. The brakes are solid, dependable, no noise in any conditions. So for me, the group set is a highlight of the bike. And I've been riding this bike through the mud, snow, ice, and the group set has been faultless. No issues with drop chains or funky shifting, just works. If you're in the market for a gravel bike in 2021, and I know a lot of people are, you are spoiled for choice. There's now lots of bikes to choose from, with nearly all manufacturers offering at least one, if not more, gravel bikes in their lineup. And most are really good. I'm also starting to see gravel bikes become quite specialised, from ultra fast aero gravel bikes for racing, to bike packing epic adventure bikes but what the Giant does really well is cut right down the middle between the two extremes and offer a bike with wide appeal. A bike you can go bike packing on, do your gravel racing on, commute to work, road riding, mess around in the woods on a weekend. It's a bike, like I said earlier, that is a blank canvas. You bring your aspirations and expectations to and it will do everything you want it to do. It doesn't hold you back in any way and it's a very, very capable bike. It's fun, it's fast, the comfort's good, it's versatile. It's a really usable and accessible bike. And if you only have space for one bike in your garage, well, this bike can certainly do it all. Road riding, gravel riding, it's a lot of fun. A really well thought out product. That while I know it's not the most visually exciting bike, does what you want and expect from a gravel bike in 2021. And being a giant, despite some recent price increases, it is exceptionally good value for money with a great parts list on this bike. From the lightweight and very flash carbon wheels, the nicely shaped handlebar, the comfy saddle, and the Shimano GRX 2x group set. The only thing you might want to change, depending on trail conditions, which for me at the moment is copious amounts of mud, are the tyres for something a little bit more uh, knobbly, shall we say. But for dry, hard pack trails or road riding, these slicks are just fine. So while it might not turn heads, it does put a smile on your face. And I think that's what's really important with a gravel bike, the way it makes you feel. And this bike is a lot of fun. So that's been my review of this bike. Now do let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the review and found it useful, then maybe hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And there probably other videos floating around here now that you can watch if you want to find more reviews on my channel. But I'm off for a ride. I'll see you all again next time. Thank you for watching.